Good morning, everybody. What a beautiful May day it is. I'm out here enjoying the sunshine, the nice weather, listening to the birds chirping, watching the squirrels attack my bird feeder. It's all good. And you know, it brings me back to a little subject that I love is near and dear to me, perspective. We all talk about that. And we talk about how fortunate we are that we don't even know how fortunate we are until we compare it to something else. And one of the things that I've been really, really fortunate with in my life is I have actually met a superhero. A lot of us don't have that opportunity and it didn't happen for me until 15 years ago when I went to a Rotary meeting here in Wilmington and I met the first superhero of my life and we became friends. His name is Brigadier General John Reynolds and he was a pilot during the Vietnam War and his story is incredible. But what's really incredible about it is the fact that he spent seven years, 60 days as a prisoner of war, five different prisoner of war camps. And as I heard his story over lunch one day, I was changed forever into what you can possibly do and how to put things into perspective. I can't tell you how many times from hearing John's story that I have said to myself during a difficult time, during a period that I'd like to quit on something or give up on it, John Reynolds wouldn't quit here, would he? And it's made me go the extra mile because I can put it in perspective. This is a guy that just passed away three weeks ago who I'm really going to miss, but at least I had 15 good years of friendship with him and he changed my life forever. You're gonna love this part of his story. It's not unusual for us to go online these days and look for the most recent superhero movie and go out and see it. Well, you know, it's very unusual to ever really meet a superhero in real life. Well, I had the privilege of doing that just 15 years ago when I went down to hear Brigadier General John Reynolds, a former F-100 pilot, tell his story about being a prisoner of war and I introduced myself and someone had told him that I was a former Philadelphia Eagle. Well, he went to high school at Lower Marion and went to Trinity College where he got a degree in engineering and he was a big Eagles fan. To make a long story not so long, we decided that we were going to have lunch together and tell each other our stories over that lunchtime period. As we sat down for lunch, I couldn't believe that I was actually in this guy's presence and I had continued to read more about him. And the more that I read about him, the more intrigued I became on how he did what he did, and then became a success following him being a captive. I said to him, John, how would you like to start telling me your story? He said, well, I would like to start by you telling me yours. I said, John, mine doesn't even compare to yours. But being a big Eagles fan, he wanted to hear my story first. And when I told it, I felt a little bit embarrassed because hearing his story was unbelievable. I won't go into all the details, but can you imagine being in a 45 foot deep well for doing something wrong and, that, and being there in isolation for a couple days at a time? Can you believe being beaten about once a week to try to get this much more information out of you and putting up with it and going back to a cell and being fed just rations, and sometimes those rations were not good rations to eat. Anyway, these are the type of things this guy went through, but I gotta tell you exactly what happened after he left those conditions. I'd like to read from the obituary so I don't get anything wrong about this superhero, but here it goes. Three weeks before his planned wedding to Emily McCarthy while flying a mission, near Yen Bay, North Vietnam on November 28, 1965, he was shot down. The wedding would not take place until nine years later in 1974. Reynolds was one of the POWs captured on film on July 6, 1966, as he was forced to march in prison pajamas through the streets of Hanoi in what became known as the Hanoi March. As one of 591 prisoners of war held captive in North Vietnam, Reynolds' duration as a POW was one of the longest. He returned home in 1973 to continue a successful career in the U.S. Air Force and in the defense industry and to marry the woman he proposed to just three weeks before he was captured. Upon returning to the real world, 
Reynolds joined Raytheon and became Raytheon's president of operations in China, Hong Kong, and Mongolia. Reynolds also dedicated himself to academia, receiving a master's degree and a Ph. degree from Duke University. He taught history and directed the World Studies Program and Military History Program at the U.S. Air Force Academy, where he and Emily both lived. John Reynolds, in my opinion, was the only superhero that I've ever met. And maybe we will never see the likes of his type again, who would risk everything for their country. John Reynolds will go down as one of those people who defines this very, very quote. The human spirit is stronger than anything that can happen to it. I don't know how he survived seven years and 60 days as a POW, but somehow he and the other prisoners made it a game to frustrate the Vietnam guards. And that's what he said kept them going, those little victories that happened every day. Think about the things that we complain about from day to day, and then think again about John's seven years and 60 days as a POW, and how he came back and never complained and just went back to work. Until next Friday, this is Kevin Riley signing off.